Hello students, I am Mrs. Purabi Das, PGT Bio, Kendra Vidyalaya, Sector 8, RK Puram. Today, let us discuss the topics, chromosomal theory of inheritance, linkage and recombination. We are going to answer two important questions. The first question, where are genes located? And the second, very important one, can we relate genes or Mendelian factors with chromosomes? To answer this question, let us go back to the discovery of cell division, mitosis and meiosis. The mitosis discovered by Welk of Fleming in 1870 and meiosis discovered by O. Hertig 1876 in C. Archin. At the same time, in 1900, the Mendelian factors or the Mendelian inheritance was rediscovered and the people were surprising that how we could relate the chromosome with genes. At that particular time, in 1902, Sutton and Bovary postulated chromosomal theory of inheritance. Later, it was expanded by Morgan and Bridges. Now let us see what are the important points of the chromosomal theory of inheritance. The chromosome are the vehicles of hereditary information. They contain Mendelian factors or genes at specific sites called LUCA. Now when you look into the picture, the specific sites are there on the chromosomes where the genes are located. Now could you recall where the chromosomes are located? Yes, you have studied the plant and the animal cell. The chromosomes, they are present inside the nucleus. A very important thing that came into headlight and that was the both the chromosomes and the genes occur in pairs. So, is there any correlation between the chromosomes and genes? Let us see. Now, during cell division, the chromosome movement take place. At the same time, if you can recall, independent assortment during the Mendelian inheritance, you could see that the chromosomes assort independently. The Mendelian factors could assort independently. So, this could have correlated with the movement of the chromosomes during meiosis, that is at the metaphase and the anaphase stages. During anamatophase and anaphase, the chromosome movement take place. During metaphase, the chromosomes align at the equatorial plate on the other hand, during anaphase, the chromosomes, they move apart to the opposite poles. You could easily see this in the following picture. Now, let us start with the chromosomal theory of inheritance, the first very important point that we have to take care about and that is the bridge between the two generations, the sperm and the ovum. That means the sperm and the ovum bridge two generations and they are produced by the diploid organism. The female producing the ova and the male producing the sperm. The gamete contains one homologous chromosomes. On the other hand, diploid organisms, whether it is a male or female, they contain two homologous chromosomes. And the pair of the chromosome is restored during fertilization. Now, can you correlate? the Mendelian inheritance with the movement of homologous chromosomes during cell division. In the following picture, you can easily see that when a tall plant is crossed with a dwarf plant, the alleles of the tall plant is represented by capital T, capital T and that of dwarf is a small t and small t. And during the gamete formation, it has only one capital T or small t. But in the F1 generation, again the two alleles, they are brought together and this forms a capital T and small t. So, in the same way, the homologous chromosomes, they are paired condition in the diploid cell, but during the gamete formation, these homologous chromosomes separate, again they reunite during zygote formation. So, there is a close relation between the behavior of the chromosomes and the genes. Now, let us discover that how the chromosome and the gene behave in the similar way in the independent assortment which was proved in the Mandel experiment. 
In the Mendel's dihybrid cross, you have seen that the alleles assort independently in the F2 generation. That means the recombinant types were formed. In the same way, in the chromosome behavior also, the homologous chromosome synapse during meiosis, but that they separate independently into different cells during the formation of genes. In the following picture, it easily illustrates that how the homologous chromosomes, they get separated and how the cells which are formed, they have the different random matings with recombinants. The experimental proof for that the chromosomes carry the genes was proved by Morgan. He used fruit fly for his experiment. Now, let us see that why he chose Drosophila only. Now, there are certain points to that. The first, it has a short generation period. Second, it has only four chromosomes. It is easy to rear and it is harmless. Now, you can look into the picture that the Drosophila that contains the female one having X, X chromosomes and the male Drosophila having X and Y chromosomes. And the karyotype is also illustrated in the picture. Now, what is so different about the Drosophila? Now, while Morgan was experimenting with the fruit fly, suddenly he observed a certain thing. The wild type that is the normal one or the dominant one was red eyed. In between the red eye Drosophila, he could find a white eyed. Now, let us see that how Mandel performed his experiment and how he was able to locate the genes on chromosomes. Let us go into the picture. Now, here you can see that the parent generation, the red eyed and the white eyed. The red eyed was the dominant one and the white eyed was the recessive one. In the F1 generation, he obtained all red eye Drosophila. Now, let us see what happened in the F2 generation. In F2 generation, he observed 3 is to 1 ratio. The 3 were red Drosophila and 1 was white Drosophila. Now, in the next set of cross, he crossed the hybrid female with the white eyed male. Now, if you remember the test cross, the test cross that is between the heterozygous condition with the homozygous recessive male. Now, let us see what he observed. Now, he observed that in the generations that was obtained, that was red-eyed female, red-eyed male, white-eyed female and white-eyed male. Now, he wondered that what happened to the red-eyed male. Now, he made the third cross. The third cross was between the white-eyed female and the red-eyed male. Now, you know that red-eyed female, that was the mutant one. How did it appear? And surprisingly, the result was all the females were red-eyed and all the males were white-eyed. So, what were the conclusions made by the Morgan? The first important conclusion was that the eye color gene is linked to sex and the gene is present on X chromosome. There is a crisscross inheritance. Crisscross means the inheritance is passed from father to daughter and from mother to son. The male sex is determined by Y chromosome and the white eyed female produced only when both X chromosomes carry recessive allele of white eye. Now, let us see another very important phenomena that is called linkage, which was discovered by Batson and Punit in 1906. The explanation was given by T. H. Morgan in 1910 based on his studies on Drosophila. Now, let us explain the dihybrid ratio of two linked genes and observe what is the result. The ratio if you see is 3 is to 1 which is quite different from the usual dihybrid ratio that is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. Now, let us see the cross. The parents which were homozygous dominant and homozygous recessive. The homozygous dominant represented by a b a b and the recessive one small a and small b. In the F2 generation we observed the ratio obtained was 3 is to 1 instead of 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. So, where were the recombinants? It was a parental type which appeared and only one that was recessive. 
Now let us inquire what happened. So here we could define the linkage. That is, the genes which are located on the same chromosomes, they tend to be inherited together during meiosis. So, that means it violates the law of independent assortment which was given by Mendel. Now, with the help of the following cross, let us understand a sex linkage in Drosophila which was performed by Morgan. Now, this was a cross which was made by Morgan using two types of alleles. The first, the color was the gray body with normal wing and that was the female. He crossed with the male Drosophila which was a double mutant with black color and vestigial wing. Now, let us see what happened to the cross. Now, in the F1 hybrid wild type, it was a gray with normal wing and in the other the double mutant which was black with the vestigial wing. The B plus it indicates the wild type, VG plus also indicates the wild type. Now what happened in the F2 generations? The offsprings were produced by test cross. Let us see what were the result. In the expected independent assortment, it could have been 575 of the wild type. 575 of the black vestigial, 575 of gray vestigial or 575 of black normal. But surprisingly what he observed was more of the parental types and less of the recombinant types. He observed 965 and 944 of the parental types and the recombinant phenotypes were 206 and 185. Now, this could be explained again with the following diagram where this means that the genes which were located on the chromosomes very close together, they were inherited together, they were not separated and that is what the linkage is. Now, we are in a position to differentiate the linked genes and unlinked genes. The linked genes, the genes closely on the same chromosomes. On the other hand, on the unlinked genes, the genes are distinctly located. In the linked genes, no dependent assortment takes place. On the other hand, we can see independent assortment in the unlinked genes. Another very important difference that in the case of linked genes, the dihybrid ratio is 3 is to 1. On the other hand, in the unlinked genes, the ratio becomes 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. The test cross ratio result in the case of linked chain is 1 is to 1. On the other hand, in the unlinked chains, it is 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. So, what did you conclude? Now, the conclusion is that in the case of linkage, we get more of parental types and less of recombinant types. Now, is there any mechanism? that can separate the linked genes? Yes, the answer is crossing over. Now, you have studied meiosis. Can you recall when the meiosis occurs? Yes, it occurs in meiosis 1, that is the process 1 of meiosis 1. And during meiosis, the crossing over take place at the patching stage and that could unlink the genes where the crossing over take place between non sister chromatids and the genes are reshuffled and new genetic recombinations are produced. Another very important fact about the linkage is that more closer the genes, the more linkage is there. That means the genes which are more closer, they are tend to inherit together. On the other hand, if the distance between the genes on the chromosomes is much apart, then the frequency of linkage will be less. On the other hand, the frequency of crossing over will be more. So, after crossing over, we come another important aspect and that is genetic recombination. So, the genetic recombination can occur in two ways. The one independent assortment. So, that is the recombination of unlinked genes and other one is the crossing over and that is the recombination of linked genes. Here lies the difference between the independent assortment and the crossing over, but the result is 
genetic recombination. Now let us go a little deep into the crossing over which you have studied in the meiosis 1. Let us see who discovered it. It was Jensen in 1909 who discovered the chiasma formation during process 1 of meiosis 1. And the new combination of the genes which were produced they were called recombinant. As you can see in the picture how the homologous chromosomes they come together and the crossing over take place between two non sister chromatids. Now let us study the following picture and the following example how the recombination of linked genes was studied by Morgan. He crossed in the dihybrid gray with normal wings with the male recessive one a double mutant that is with the black with vestigial wings. Now the gamil feature produced the dihybrid female that was four type of gamils and you can easily see that recombinance that means the crossing over has taken place. After studying linkage and crossing over now a very important question that strikes our mind that why Mendel missed the linkage. So here lies the answer the seven characters that Mendel studied in those characters the genes were present on non homologous chromosomes. So as a result what happened? As a result the genes got separated by crossing over. Now let us see a very important topic and discuss the sex determination in different organisms. Now let us recall the homologous chromosomes that we have studied in meiosis that the homologous chromosomes they are cut in pairs. Now out of these two homologous chromosome the one is from the father and another is from the mother and they come together only in the prophase and metaphase of meiosis 1. The following picture clearly shows the prophase 1 and the metaphase 1 of meiosis 1. What do you observe in prophase 1? You see in the prophase 1 the two chromosomes coming closer to each other. In the same way during metaphase 1 chromosomes align on the equatorial plane. Let us see the types of chromosomes. There are two types of chromosomes, sex chromosomes and the autosomes. Autosomes are the normal and the sex chromosome are one which determines sex. Here there are two conditions. One is homogametic condition, other one is heterogametic. The homogametic condition that is having the chromosomes of the same type. Can you recall the human female? The human female has XX chromosome. On the other hand, human male it has X and Y chromosome. So, two different chromosomes. That is why it is called heterogametic condition. So, in the following picture, we can easily see that how these heterogametic and homogametic conditions are fulfilled in human male and also in Drosophila. First type is the XX and XY type. XX is the female and XY is the male. This is found in the mammals and in the most insects. The second type of sex determination is XXX0 type. This is generally found in the round worms and grasshopper where the female is XX that is it is homogametic but the male is X0 that is it is heterogametic. So it is going to produce two type of sperms one with the X chromosome and another sperm with no chromosome. The third type of self determination is ZW and ZZ type. This is found in birds and in some reptiles. The female is heteromorphic having AA plus ZW. The AA stands for the autosomes and ZW stands for the chromosomes. On the other hand the male is homomorphic that is AA plus ZZ. That means it is just the opposite we found in the man. Here the eggs are A plus Z and A plus W. On the other hand the sperms are all of the same kind having A plus Z but the eggs are different. The next type of sex determination is Z0, ZZ type. This is found in the butterflies and moths. Here the male is AA plus ZZ that means the male is homomorphic. 
and produces the same type of sperms. On the other hand, the X produces two types, A plus Z and A plus zero, that is heteromorphic. Now, let us come to the summary of the topics. The first, the chromosome and the genes occur in pairs. The genes are located on the chromosomes. The tendency of genes on the same chromosome to be inherited together is called linkage. Smaller the distance between the genes, more is the linkage. And the self determination two types XXXY, XXX0, ZWZZ, Z0ZZ. Now I have a small quiz for you. Try this. The chromosomes and genes occur in dash. The linkage discovered by dash in dash. The paired state of chromosomes restored in dash formation. The linkage violates the law of dash. Dash in meiosis can dash genes. Man shows dash type of sex determination and individuals having two types of gametes called dash. In the next episode, we are going to discuss about the topics genetic disorders, mutation and pedigree analysis.